You're listening to a message from the Winsboro Church of Christ. This is the Winsboro.Church podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or prayer requests, you can get in touch with us at any time through our website at Winsboro.Church. How would you define light? We might say, well, light is illumination. Uh, Some might say light is the absence of darkness, but really the reverse is true. Darkness is the absence of light. Uh, Darkness is void and emptiness. Uh, But light fills that darkness. It fills it with, uh, well, with the ability to see, with, with an energy that our optic nerves can translate and understand and then we can see where objects are, what's around us. Uh, technically, light is, and i got to read this, electromagnetic radiation that is visible to humans and animal optic nerves. So that's what light is. But that means we see the objects around us because uh, these uh, radiation waves reflect back and our eyes interpret it as such. And that's light. But we use light idiomatically as well uh, as the truth. We see light as an understanding when now what was obscure is now understood. And so we see the light. Well, something came to light because now we understand what we didn't understand before. When we walk in the light, we walk in truth. and We walk in understanding. Uh, we use light as the opposite of error, uh, of falsehood throughout the centuries. Uh, time and time again, in all, in all cultures, that idiom has come to be used. That light means truth. Light means understanding. Light means knowing. We're in the season of lights. You've probably got a Christmas tree with lights all on it, several hundred of these little bitty lights. that, uh, And so maybe even a thousand on some trees. And then you might have even got some around the side of your house or in front uh, or in the windows. Uh, the energy consumption in, in December must make the power companies really glad. Uh, some of you might even have uh, a candelabra or menorah in one of your windows to be a light to shine. Uh, Matthew tells us that when Jesus was born, a star announced his coming. And there were wise men that followed the light from wherever it was that they were from in the east, maybe Babylon or someplace, toward the uh, west, toward Israel, toward Jerusalem, and finally to Bethlehem to see the coming king because the the legend was that with the coming of the light there would be a new king, the king of Israel. Just how I wonder how specific that light was because when they got to Jerusalem they asked for directions. But then it says that the light reappeared and so maybe they needed to ask directions because, well, the light wasn't shining when they got to Jerusalem. But they go there and and they ask for direction. About the same time, or maybe even a little before, the shepherds are in their fields around Bethlehem and the glory of the Lord shined around about them. The angel of God told them that unto them was born the Messiah, the King of Israel, and they would find him laying in a manger. So they went. They went to see the king who was born. The wise man then left Jerusalem later than that star reappeared, showed them where Jesus was. The apostle John doesn't give us the details about his birth, but John does tell us about the beginning, how Jesus is the light. Uh, He is the beginning of all things. He was there when all things were created, and without him nothing was made that was made. John proclaims that Jesus is the light of the world. John chapter 1, verse 4, In him was life, the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness has not overcome it, or 
some translations will read, the darkness didn't receive it. Verse 9, the true light, which in one was coming into the world, and he was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. As physical light is so important to be able to see in this physical world, spiritual light is important to understand things spiritually, to see in this spiritual world. Jesus is light and gives life to be the light of men to show the way so that you and I can see to live spiritually. John tells us that Jesus is the true light. There are lots of false lights then. There are a lot of false lights today that give an obscure and incorrect, a, a false message, a false understanding. Jesus gives the real light, the true light. But unfortunately then and now, there are some who prefer the darkness. They don't like what the light shows them, and so they prefer to stay in the darkness. They don't want the truth. They don't want the light. The great and wonderful truth is, however, that those who do accept the truth of Jesus, the light of Jesus, we have the right to become children of God. Ah, oh, such a wonderful illumination that the light gives to us. We can see how to be his children. The theme of Jesus being the light, the truth of the gospel, is found throughout Scripture, especially in John. Where John tells us again and again, Jesus illuminates. Jesus gives light. Not just for those in Israel then, uh, but that claim, that message of Jesus is worldwide for all to understand and all to know. And the person anywhere who chooses to reject his word, they're going to walk in darkness. We need to walk in the light as he is in the light. Jesus would say in John chapter 8, verse 12, and again Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the right, or but will have the light of life. Try to walk around in the dark. I mean, the real dark. Verse 13. So the Pharisees said to him, you are bearing witness about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered, even if I do bear witness about myself, my testimony is true. For I know where I came from and where I'm going. You do not know where I came from or where I'm going. Verse 18, I am the one who bears witness about myself. The Father who sent me bears witness about me. For those who can see, light is Self-evident. Don't have to tell any of us that the light's on or the light's off because we see. It is self-evident. And so the testimony uh, that Jesus gave about himself for the spiritually sighted was obvious. It was true. But the Pharisees were spiritually blind by choice, I guess. They did not want to see. They didn't want to understand. And so they could not see the light of Jesus. They couldn't understand how he was the light of the world. They chose, I guess you could say, to close their eyes. Self-blindness. The light was there. But with eyes closed, they walked in the dark. They asked for additional witness to validate the word of Jesus. But Jesus said, you have to. You have my testimony, and God has testified for me with the signs and the miracles and the wonders that he has performed. We could add to not only that, but the, the prophecies of the Old Testament and so many other witnesses that Jesus is the light. 
Pharisees understood. If we accept that, if we if we admit that's true, that means that we've been walking in the darkness and they would not admit that. They knew that their works would be exposed in the light and they did not want their works of evil, of disbelief, of selfishness, of self-righteousness to be exposed. So they said, we can't see. This isn't light. They would not believe. John 3, verse 19. And this is the judgment. The light is come into the world. And people love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But everyone who does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been carried out by God. Know the truth of God. Walk in the truth. Allow the light of God to shine in you that your light might go everywhere. Hanukkah begins tonight. Uh, we don't talk about Hanukkah very much because it's a Jewish holiday that's not technically in the, well, it's not in the Old Testament. It is in the New Testament. Hanukkah starts on the Jewish calendar day, Tishka 25. Jesus was in Jerusalem in John chapter 10, verse 22, to celebrate Hanukkah. Uh, Hanukkah actually is the Hebrew word for dedication, for the Feast of the Dedication. Uh, sometimes it's called the Festival of Lights because they burn lights just like we do. The story of Hanukkah is recorded in the first book of Maccabees. Now, Maccabees is part of the Apocrypha, and, and most of our Bibles today don't put the Apocrypha in them, but it's in the first book of, of Maccabees. Prior to the year 165 B.C., that is before Jesus, the Jewish people in Judea lived under the Greek kings of Damascus. You remember after Alexander uh, the great uh, conquered much of the world, he died, and his kingdom was divided into three among three different of his generals. And one of them was stationed in Damascus, and he was the Seleucid Greek king that ruled there, and his territory included Israel. Uh, king Antioch, uh, Antiochus uh, Epiphanes was the one who was ruling that area at the time of the Maccabees. He took control of the temple in Jerusalem and would not allow the Jews there to worship God, but instead he uh, sacrificed a pig on the altar there at the temple and he required that all of Israel pay homage to the Greek gods as well as to himself. He was a madman and thought of himself as a god. He, he required that everybody bow down to him and the Greek gods. That was an abomination to all of Israel. The, the, the desecration that was in the temple then. The sacrifice of these unclean animals, the pig, even blood sprinkled on the holy scrolls of Scripture. The Maccabee brothers revolted. There were four of them. They wanted to free themselves of this pagan practice. These men of fierce faith and loyalty to God and their followers became known as the Maccabees. And they won the victory, defeating uh, the Greek armies there. Uh, the scriptures speak of them, or the first Maccabees speak of them having strength from heaven. And so they delivered Israel from that domination, from uh, the Greek Syrian control. They cleansed the temple then to restore it to a practice of offering sacrifices to God. Uh, they cleaned out all of the Greek idolatry and 
they dedicated the temple. And the day of that year that they were dedicating the temple uh, is today. Uh, that is, it starts tonight at sunset. The, the Hebrew days begin at sunset, so I guess it would be more tomorrow. Hanukkah then received its name from the Feast of the Dedication. Hanukkah means dedication, uh, the rededication of the temple. But it also is called the Feast of Lights because they returned and relit the menorah or the candle or the, the lampstand that was in the temple. Now the lampstand was there, part of the original construction that God gave to Moses uh, and Aaron for them to build in the tabernacle and then it was in the temple. The instructions about the construction of that lampstand, Exodus chapter 25, verse 31, you shall make a lampstand of pure gold. A lampstand shall be made of hammered work, its base, its stem, its cups, its uh, cal uh, calluses, and flowers shall be of one piece with it. And there shall be six branches going out on its sides, three branches of the lampstand out on one side of it, and three branches of the lampstand out on the other side. Verse 37, and you shall make seven lamps for it. The lamp shall be set up so as to give light in the space in front of it. It's Tongs and their trays shall be of pure gold, and it shall be made with these utensils out of a talent of pure gold. And see that you make them after the pattern for them which is being shown to you on the mountain. I believe a talent is about 75 pounds. Pure gold, 75 pounds, I'm not sure. I'm, I, that's got to be more than $2 million in the value of the gold for that lampstand. The oil that was burned in that was olive oil that had been specifically dedicated for that purpose. Luke, uh, Leviticus chapter 24, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Command the people of Israel to bring you pure oil from beaten olives for the lamp, that it may be kept burning regularly or continually in some translations. The continually burning lamp was a sign of God's presence there in the temple. It was a sign of the truth that God gave to all of Israel. Know the Lord, know his will, know his truth. Be in his light. Part of the priestly duty was to keep that lamp burning all the time. Continually. The center light was to never go out. It was to always have oil, always be burning, always showing the light of God's truth. But when the temple was rededicated by the Maccabee brothers, all of the oil had been defiled by the Greeks. There was a little bit that was not. They decided to still go ahead and light the lamp. But there wasn't really enough for the whole week. And it takes about a week to press the gray or to press the olives to, to produce the oil. They went ahead and started anyway. And that day they claimed, or that week they claimed that there was a miracle of God and that the oil survived, it lasted the whole week, even though there was only light for one day. Consequently then, it's also the festival of lights, commemorating the fact that God gave them light, the light of his truth, the light of his will. Now, 160 years later, or really it'd be almost 200 years later, Jesus is in Jerusalem for the Festival of Lights, or the Feast of the Dedication. John chapter 10. It's winter. It's cold. He's there on the Temple Mount, and he gathers by a fire, seeking some comfort, some protection from the elements there on Solomon's Colonnade. In just three more months, he'll die on the cross. The enemies about him are, are gathered seeking his demise. So he's there in the temple. The Pharisees, his enemies, and antagonists, they say, Tell us, are you the one? Who are you? They want a confrontation with Jesus. 
they're threatened by his success. John chapter 10, verse 22. And at the time of the Feast of Dedication took place in Jerusalem, it was winter. And Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you did not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me, but you do not believe because you are not part of my flock. My sheep hear my voice, and they know them, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Jesus says, I told you and you didn't believe. You saw the miracles and you weren't impressed. But the miracles confirm that I am who I say I am, the Christ. You refuse to believe because you don't want to follow me. Those who believe in me know the truth. They hear my voice, they follow me, because they're not blind. They have their eyes open. They can see. They hear my voice. They have my light. But even if you try, you will not dissuade them from following me. Because I know who they are, and God knows who they are. God and I are the same. We are one. Remember at the time of the Maccabean revolt, King Antiochus was saying that he was a god. And on the altar there in the temple, he had said he wanted people to worship him because he was God. He was a madman. But you know that Israel was very touchy about anyone who claimed to be God. And here Jesus is in the temple saying that. That really enraged them. Because they would not believe such was their blindness. Such was their stubbornness to reject the fact that Jesus is Messiah. They would not open their eyes to see the light that shines from him. So they picked up stones, ready to stone him because he had blasphemed, or at least in their eyes he had blasphemed. They would not believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, the source of eternal light for all humankind. The menorah used in uh, Hanukkah has nine lamps on it, or nine candles generally now. That that was in the temple had seven. But they thought, well, it shouldn't be exactly the same as that is in the temple because, well, it's not the one that's in the temple. And since the oil lasted eight days, they put eight, four candles on, four lights on either side and the one in the middle. It's called the shamash, or the servant. Because the one in the center is the one that's used to light all the others. The center light is the one that gives light to the others. It's the center light that must never be extinguished. It must always be burning. Jesus is the servant of all. His light is never extinguished. His light gives light to all, to everyone that would want to see, that would want to have light. Jesus came, well, John chapter 8. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So as the sinner light 
gave light to the others. So Jesus gives us light. He changes who we are. You see, once we were darkness, once we were in the dark, but in Jesus we have light. We are made to be light. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. The eye of the lamp is the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. Pharisees kept their eyes closed. It would not allow light to come in, and so their inside was filled with darkness. But the message from Jesus is, open your eyes, see the light, allow the light to flood your your inside, your, yourself, your soul, so that you can have light from God. That you'll be light. When we purposefully close our eyes, we are doubly blind. We are blind because we can't see, but it's our own decision. And the light doesn't shine inside us. We stay in darkness. Receiving the light, then we are illuminated. And we are changed. Receiving light from Jesus, the servant, we now are changed. We become light. Emitting light ourselves. God changes who we are on the inside. We become light, a source of truth to the rest of the world. So that the others in this world have light as well. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. For at the one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in what is good and right and true. In trying to discern what is pleasing to the Lord, take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. When anything exposed by the light becomes visible, be the light. Let the world see the truth. Let the world be guided so they can follow to God. Because we have allowed the light of God to shine in us and change who we are, now we shine into the world, shining goodness and truth. And love, the truth of the Lord in us, shows the, the darkness that remains in the world. It shows so that the world can avoid these stumbling blocks. So that the world can avoid the holes, the dangers, the, those things that Satan would stick in front of us to destroy our path. So Jesus would say, you are now the light of the world. Like a city set on a hill. Matthew 5, part of the Sermon on the Mount, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a, lamp, uh, on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Shine. Shine in the world so that everyone can see God. We've got to be the light of the world. We've got to be the light of Jesus. We have to be the light so that others can know the Lamb. We have to be the character of Jesus in this world. He, we need to be Him. We must have His righteousness and love and compassion and grace and mercy so that others can know His love and His compassion, His mercy and grace. His light must shine through us, in us. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6, For God has said, Let light shine out of darkness. In this world of darkness, you and I have to shine the light to expose the darkness, to eliminate the darkness. Let light shine out of darkness has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Let, let light shine in you. 
be the light. And so in a few days it will be Christmas. And everywhere there are wishes of cheer and goodwill and peace on earth, goodwill among men. Day stars shine upon us, change who we are to what we need to be. As the star guided men who sought the Christ child, the infant Emmanuel, be a source of light and truth to help seekers today know God. That they might see Jesus. Shine the light. Don't be a spot of darkness absorbing the light. Before we were darkness, we've made, been made new. We've been made like Jesus. Be the light. Shine the light into this world of darkness where there is hatred and give mercy and love. Where there is distrust, give faith. Where there's doubt and disbelief, give hope and confidence. Where there's hypocrisy, give integrity. And where there's loneliness, give comfort. And where there's rebellion, give obedience. And where there's greed, give generosity. Where there's denial, testify. Jesus is the Christ. We always want to have a time of prayer every Sunday when we are gathered together. Maybe you are at a place in your life when you want to turn your life around to be the light. In a moment, we'll sing a song of encouragement. If you would like to be born again into Christ, the water's ready, everything is ready, there's towels, there's clothing. You can be baptized today to be part of the kingdom of God, to be the light. Maybe you've done that, or, or maybe there's conflict in your heart or your soul, and you're struggling, and you want prayer. There will be some in the foyer ready to pray with you, some of us here at the front ready to pray with you. If you've not professed your belief, repent today. Confess Jesus and be baptized in Him for the remission of your sin. Let's all trim our lights so that we can shine brightly in this world of darkness. Make this place indeed well lit for all to see. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. Now to Him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of His glory with great joy, to the only God, our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory and majesty, dominion and authority before all, Time and now and forever.